allergies. Red meat allergies. Have you ever heard of being allergic to red meat? It turns out it's growing in frequency and it's quite common. And the mechanism is absolutely bizarre. But people are bit by ticks in their certain states like Virginia and Colorado, Rocky Mountain spotted fever and such, where tick bites are very common. Michigan, also out there. We see deer everywhere and ticks and deer go together. Although this is a different tick that is being involved now. And it turns out that you can get an antibody in your blood in these areas like Virginia, 20 to 30% of people have an antibody. It's actually an antibody to a carbohydrate that's in red meat. Yes, there is carbohydrate in red meat. This happens to be part of a blood type. It's called alpha-gal, and the antibody cross-reacts with your heart arteries. Oh my God, that's terrible. So here's a beautiful review paper just out from Virginia entitled Tick Bites and Red Meat Allergy. Oh my God, I read the whole thing. It's fascinating. But even more fascinating is this National Institutes of Health funded study at University of Virginia that they took 118 people undergoing a catheterization. 26% in their blood had the antibody to this tick, antibody to alpha-gal. And it turns out their heart disease was getting worse 30% faster than people that didn't have this antibody. So though we have not heard about pre Obviously, red meat allergies, and I'm talking about people that eat meat and within four to five hours might get itchy, might have a stuffy nose, they might think it's something in the air. Who thinks of red meat allergy? But furthermore, who thinks it's possible to take an artery and turn it into that? Because not only of the saturated fat and the animal protein and the five new GC and the rise in inflammation and C-reactive protein that can happen with red meat, at least CAFO farmed meat, which is 95 to 98 percent of meat. But now this allergic response is absolutely another amazing pathway that says beans, not beef, plants, not animals, go for health and avoid this very strange but very fascinating reaction. Over and out, Con Center for Cardiac Okay, so Dr. Khan is correct about the tick bite leading to uh, meat allergy or red meat allergy. There's this alpha-gal protein that most mammals have, except for humans and a couple other. But most of the meat, red meat that we eat, have this alpha-gal protein. And the ticks carry, um, they bite a mammal, and I guess when they uh, inject it back into you when they bite, they, your body will produce this antibody against this and see it as a toxin. And so you develop this allergy. And so I was looking into this, not just because we get, have a lot of ticks around here. My son got bit by a tick and we pulled one off the other day. But I was looking into this because it seemed like something that was manufactured to me. I mean, just just by hearing about it, you get bit by a tick and you develop antibodies to red meat, uh, protein and red meat. So it seemed completely like a vaccine or something that w could have been created, man-made. And I'm not saying it is or it isn't. What I'm saying while looking into this, what fascinated me, I ran across uh, Dr. Khan and his deceptive manipulation of this and what the research finds. So oh, this red meat allergy is either fairly new, like within the last 10 years they've discovered this, or like it's been discovered, you know, they just weren't aware of it. And this is the theory that plenty of people, well not plenty, but a lot more people than we realize may have this uh, slight allergy, but it may not be so serious that it puts them in anaphylactic shock, do you see what I'm saying? So. They may have like some stomach issues after they eat and never know what they're pin what they should pinpoint it to. Now, as I said, I, I originally wanted to look into whether this could have possibly been some kind of bioweapon, just like a lot of people theorize Lyme is. And yeah, those are very controversial beliefs, and I'm, I realize all that. But it's if you know how vaccines work you know that it's just a concoction with um, that your body mounts antibodies to. So when it's injected, you have the, you know, the bacteria or the virus or strain or whatever they want to use combined with adjuvants like aluminum, things that will rile up your system and cause an inflammatory response. And when it's directly injected into your bloodstream or your muscul muscular tissue or when a tick bites you and it goes directly and it bypasses the mouth, nose, eyes. So when it goes directly into your bloodstream like this, your body will immediately start mounting defenses and it will form antibodies. It will see it all as toxic or, you know, something it has to mount an, a defense to. And so that's why vaccines work. Work as far as, you know, getting your body to create antibodies for this. So when, you're, when you have a virus go through the mouth or nose or eyes, your body can more easily kill it off and just flush it out. But I don't want to get too off track with that um, theory and idea. So what I, 
what I found interesting about what Joel Kahn was saying is it was sort of confusing, right? If you listen to what he's saying, he's talking about, you know, the conventional wisdom that we have on cholesterol and building up plaque in your arteries and then just jumps to these studies real quick, like flashes them in front of you without you knowing much about this disease or, you know, how this relates to building up cholesterol. Because if you think about it, why these people, if the cholesterol theory is right, these people should have less you know, heart disease, because they're not eating red meat anymore, right? And so, you start to realize, like, if you know anything about Natasha Campbell's work and her ideas on cholesterol and heart disease and how fat isn't actually the cause, well, you realize this is a lot more complex. It's not just as simple as eating fat and it just goes into your arteries and clogs them up. I mean, You'd have to be a, a pretty cold creature to see, you know, to have fat go into your arteries and do this. And I used to wonder about this as well, just knowing nothing, watching bacon grease uh, firm up when it gets cold and everybody be like, that's what's going to happen when it goes into your arteries. Well, how? How when your body should never be that cold? Your body should be 98.6 degrees. Okay, so I digress, but I just want to go over this study, not thoroughly, but I want to look at the nuances that Dr. Kahn seems to have left out for whatever reason. You can pause it at any time and read through. But if you look at the plaque on the, uh, the artery on the left, it seems to have little plaque, and that's a, a typical meat eater. And on the right is a person who has this allergy to this sugar in red meat and mammal meat. And so, this just goes to show us, <laughs> this doesn't tell us to stop eating meat. This tells us that we don't understand cholesterol, and, you know, plaque buildup and atherosclerosis fully. And as Dr. Natasha Campbell says, this is about um, an essential fatty acid. They're going to repair something. You know, something's trying to be repaired. And they're... There's a problem with it, you know. The number of people with red meat allergies in the United States is unclear, but researchers estimate that it may be 1% of the population in some areas. The number of people who develop blood antibodies to red meat allergen without having full-blown symptoms is much higher, as much as 20% of the population in some areas. So, that's, that's another thing. For all we know, this could be the cause of plaque buildup for most people. I mean, we don't really know. There, I can tell you what, there are many different factors in this. There are many different issues that people are having within their body. There, but it is not the fault of animal foods. I mean, can I say that definitively? I'm not. I haven't researched this my entire life, but I can tell you from what I have looked into, it, the evidence doesn't seem to be pointing to that. It seems like the more we learn, the more we find out, the more we realize how complex this is, how nuanced it all is, and how the whole system has to be working well. Using an imaging procedure, the researchers found that the quantity of plaque was 30% higher in the alpha-gal sensitized patients than in the non-sensitized patients. These plaques, a hallmark of atherosclerosis, also tended to be more structurally unstable, which means that they have an increased likelihood of causing heart attack and stroke. So this evidence is still preliminary and they're needing to do further research. But again, these are people that are not eating red meat anymore. Or if they are, they're eating very little of it. So, what is the what is the recommendations that they what go vegan or you could eat bird? I think emu is a reddish meat. <laughs> but I mean, imagine is this if this becomes more common and they actually start listing it with lime is like what three hundred thousand a year get lime. So, and that's just what they you know have on record. That's just what has been diagnosed. So, more and more people get something like this. It's, it's interesting. Um, yeah. 
I would like to go ahead and tell people how to correctly move, remove a tick since we are on the topic anyway. So don't do what I did, which I used tweezers the other day and then I found out even though lots of uh, websites will give that same information to use tweezers. And I've always just pulled them off. And that has always worked perfectly fine for me. Just to uh, pull it off with your fingers. But um, you want to take uh, like the wart remover spray. You can buy that over the counter. It has the ether in it. And it has a little round lid like that you put over the wart. But you put it over the tick. And push down and it lets out that ether spray and what it does is it freezes it and so you wait a few seconds and the tick will just fall off and so that's the best way without you know you don't want to get the head stuck in there anything like that you don't want the tick to you know extract any more toxins into your body so you just want to get it off smooth easy don't get the head stuck you squeeze it especially with tweezers it could empty its stomach contents into the bloodstream so that's the worst thing you should do I don't know why every website seems to say to do this I'll link a video in the description about how to do this but yeah if we just look at what the media says I mean look at the title the way a tick bite could cause harm to your heart hint it involves red meat like we've been telling you for years and years and years even though it doesn't necessarily involve red meat because you're not eating it anymore Wow. ...is the destroyer. So the repair is trying to build those collagen fibers to put the, ne the mesh over the wound, put the bandage over the wound, and tries to build new cells, new baby cells in there, into that mesh, while inflammation is destroying all that and tearing it apart and destroying it and tearing it apart. So as a result, instead of being partners, brothers that they used to be, inflammation and repair, they become enemies. They start fighting each other. Right there inside your artery wall. So as soon as the repair, repair needs cholesterol, as soon as the repair tries to build collagen, new cells, repair this place, all these substances get torn and torn apart and destroyed by the inflammation. So the place, the, that damage, instead of healing, turns into a pile of rubbish, in, into a never healing ulcer inside your artery wall. That is what atherosclerosis is. It is not a lump of fat and cholesterol stuck to your wall. It is a never healing ulcer inside your artery.